It's Mike, your host of Crushing Your Fear, the podcast on how to deal with your fear. And uh, sorry for the audio quality. I'm not in front of my microphone, but I wanted to uh, just jump on and uh, tell you what happened to me in the past week. A lot of interesting things, uh, some bad and some good, I guess, or negative and positive. But um, just uh, I was supposed to take a trip to Brazil, actually. I was supposed to see my girlfriend, um, and um, I did start my journey. Uh, and there was a lot of emotions going on in that trip because I uh, started the journey. I started in New York and I had to take an overnight flight. The flight like took off at one in the morning and I got to Mexico. Uh, then I had like a 12 hour layover in Mexico and <clears throat> uh, got on another plane. I went on another overnight flight to uh, Brazil. And then when I got to Brazil, I had everything ready. Um, uh, had my documents prepared and I did not get this vaccination yet. Um, I don't think it's warranted. Uh, that's the way I feel. Um, I'm okay. Um, but, um, you know, apparently on their website, they said that you just needed a test and I had my test. And I went there, they pulled me off the line and I went to the uh, local health authority there and they started questioning me and where are you coming from and where are you staying here for? And, uh, did you get the vaccine? I'm like, no, uh, because your your website says uh, that you don't need the vaccine. You know, on the 18th, you needed it. You know, starting the 18th, you needed a vaccine, December 18th. But it was December 17th at that time. <clears throat> and I'm like, look, all right, this is what your website says. I mean, what do you want from me? I have all my documents. And I'm like, well, you know, a judge mandated it. There's that word again, mandate. And... Um, Apparently, judges there could make all the laws, uh, and he said everybody's got to have a vaccine to come into the country. I'm like, well, this is not good. You know, I've been traveling for like almost 48 hours uh, to get here. I have someone that I need to see, and we're going to spend, you know, like about two weeks down in Brazil. And I'm like, okay. Um so there was a lot of stuff going through me. I'm like, what the hell? Like I just traveled 48 hours. I planned, we planned this out a long time to get there to see her. I haven't seen her in like 16 months. <laughs> and I finally get there and I was about three hour plane ride away from her. I was in her country and uh, they pulled me off the line and they said, look, you know, I'm sorry, you have to go back to Mexico and, and um, we're going to send you back there. I'm like, I don't want to go back to Mexico. I live in New York. Uh, and, and this is kind of ridiculous. I mean, you have this thing on your website. They're like, I'm sorry. I don't know. Like people were just shrugging, putting their hands up. I'm like, all right, what am I going to do? Okay. Am I going to panic or am I going to get crazy, start yelling at people and get arrested and being thrown into a jail? They took me to like this area called federal police, right? I'm like, okay. So they said, give me your luggage tag and your passport. So I gave them the luggage tag and a passport. And then they uh, ex escorted me up to uh, an area in the terminal uh, near the gates. And they said, look, this is your gate. This is where your flight's going to be traveling out of and you're going back. I'm like, that's really great. So what goes through your mind, right? You take a 48 hour flight, go down there, try to get back. Uh, so that's it. I started my journey back. So I had to wait another, man, I waited another like 14 hours until the, the next flight came. Um, thank God they had these lounges there, right? You can go into a lounge, take a shower and pay 40 bucks, whatever, eat some food. I did some work. So came all the way, you know, went back to Mexico, had to, and they said, eh, no worry, don't, you don't, you don't need a COVID test to go back to the U S. So I asked somebody in Mexico and said, yes, you do need a COVID test to go to get on the plane. I'm like, that's great. So I had to go outside, find a uh, area where they gave me another COVID test to get back into the U S um, got online again when the flight was taking off. And then they looked at my, my, uh, my ticket and uh, they said, you, you know, please come here, sir. And, you know, and they took me off the line. I'm like, I'm getting on this damn plane and you're not giving up my seat. <laughs> I started to get crazy. I'm like this far away from, you know, getting back to the U S you know, back to some, some, some semblance of sanity. 
And uh, I got off the line. There was a minor error with the ticket and I had to get back online. And then I got on the plane and I returned. So I'm like, okay. You know, and I told my siblings that I was uh, coming back. Um, my whole trip took about 72 hours. I started on Wednesday evening and I got back on Saturday evening, um, just traveling through airports, eating airport food. It destroyed my uh, system, but I'm, I'm bouncing back. Um, I told my siblings and they're like, nope, you got to go. Um, you can't see your parents. You've been, you've been in different countries, especially Brazil, Mexico. You have COVID. And I'm like, I don't have effing COVID. I took two tests. I'm good. You know, and my parents came up from uh, from Florida and family, and now they're restricting. Maybe they're not going to see them. I'm like, this just this is crazy. All right, you're crazy. So I'm spending time with my kids, uh, where they live. Um, uh, just which is the and uh, that's all the negative, right? Now here comes the positive stuff, uh, which I get to spend time with my kids for Christmas and. Um, I'm also going to spend New Year's with them, and I'm, I'm, I'm able to go skiing. We're going to go up to Sunday River, and we're going to have a great ski trip, uh, you know, four days with them, um, you know, kind of relax and uh, be together. Um, also had a deal closed, right? It was, we were working on a deal for a couple months, and uh, that finally closed. So that's a nice uh, in, inflow of income. And the whole thing is like, all right, well, you know, how would I handle this like a couple of years ago? You know, there's a lot of fear going on. You're trapped in an airport. You're, you're seeing federal police signs. You don't know how you're going to get back. You don't know who's going to pay for it, right? Um, so far, I lost the deposit on actually the whole amount for like I had an Airbnb in Brazil. I'm trying to get that back. Um, the uh, airline won't give me my money back because um, and I pay a lot of money. Uh, I'm going to try to get that back as well. But, hey, I'm back here. And I, I thought about it well, a couple of years ago. How would I have done this? I probably would have freaked out and ended up in jail, uh, which would not be a good thing. Uh, but, you know, now I, I did a lot of work on myself. And, um, you know, kind of kind of regrouped, right? Uh, I'm regrouping. I got back here assess the situation, see what the positives and the negatives are. And I'm like, okay, I lost the battle. I haven't seen her now, but I didn't lose the war. And we're going to reschedule some time, probably in April or May. I got a lot of work coming up, which I have to be here, but I'm going to go back and we're going to meet in Mexico. Not going to go back to Brazil because they're this vaccine crap. Mexico is uh, apparently is letting people in right now. Hopefully that stays the same. I don't know because they just canceled Davos, right? All these elite people are, you know, it doesn't look good if they're locking down the rest of the world and these, uh, you know, big shots are in Davos laughing it up, yucking it up, right? So they canceled that. I don't know what's going to come down the pike in the, in the beginning of the new year, but that's just another thing we have to be, be prepared for. Um, you know, like I said, I, I worked on myself over the past couple of years and, uh, I could have been very negative now and depressed, but I'm like, look, look at the positive. Um, I'm working on, on myself, you know, doing meditation, visioning, right. Uh, for the future. Okay. The future is not happening right now. And, but I do, do still have a vision for the future and I change my mindset. That's, that's so important. Just the way you perceive things things come at you, you know, things do come at you and they come in waves, right? Things are not just a straight line. You know, you're going to go up, you know, and get, get your goal right away. It's, it's just a vertical line. It doesn't happen that way. Things go up and down. So accepting the negative um, and just adjusting, pivoting. I, I'm surrounding myself with great people um, who, who are just really, fantastic people really good to the core and and i appreciate them but that's what you have to do if you have negative people in your life get them out because then you'll be negative you are who you surround yourself with right your circle of friends look at the five closest people to you um and and you'll be one of them so just take a look at that um and believe in a higher power as well there is a higher power 
Uh, I believe that there's a lot of energy around us and just trust uh, in the process. Do the best you can. Be the best person you can. If someone does, does you wrong, you know, look at it, feel sorry for them, right? And um, just accept it and move on and distance yourself from them, you know, if they're negative. And like I said, life's going to throw stuff at you. There's waves. Everything is in waves. Vision, right? You know, sight, um, waves, hearing, waves, the ocean, it goes up and down. And you got to ride it out, you know, get on your surfboard and ride that thing out and you will achieve your goals. Uh, but another thing, goal setting, right? You're, it's the end of the year. Have you set your goals for 2022 and beyond? I mean, I did and I, I've gotten help from people and set goals for the year and now I'm breaking them down by quarter. Where do I want to get B at the end of quarter one, Q1? Where I want to be at the end of Q2? And just be very clear on your goals. So just sit down, go in a room, say, guys, I got to go in a room, go for an hour, jot some stuff down, try to structure your goals, put them on your phone, right? On your, your wallpaper. Like when you open your phone, you see them. That's a tip from uh, Ed Milet. It's fantastic. It's helped me a lot. And, um, you know, last year I achieved, eh, I achieved maybe like, you know, four out of the five goals, which is pretty awesome. Right. And I got, so I readjusted this year and I tweaked them. I got bigger goals, which I'm going for, but fear, you know, look at fear, look at situations because uh, it's going to arise uh, and it's how you handle fear, which, which makes a difference, right? So think life is going to throw stuff at you. You never know. I didn't know this was going to happen. It did. I'm adjusting and we're going to move forward into the new year. All right. That's what I have for you today. If you need me for anything, I'm at Michael at crushing your fear.com. Um, shoot me an email let's talk you know especially during these times of the year people get depressed and they think all is lost i'd love to talk to you and that's my podcast for today it's christmas eve so have a great um holiday whatever you celebrate the kwanzaa um you know hanukkah christmas whatever you celebrate it's the end of the year Look back on this year and let's, you know, set your goals for 2022 because that is going to be the year for you. All right, guys. Love you guys. Thank you for listening. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Mm-hmm.